In step 5 of an SEM analysis, I will perform the SEM analysis. The results are then shown on the screen. Um, I have a model here with four variables, a uh, variety of electronic communication tools used, uh, the degree of procedure structuring or management uh, employed by teams, the efficiency of each team, and effectiveness of each team. So uh, this model, th these results suggest that ECU-VAR influences PROC, PROC influences efficiency, efficiency influences EFI, and uh, PROC influences EFI when controlled when we control for the effect of EFI. Uh, I can save all model estimates into a tab delimited file. I can save uh, correlations among indicators in a tab delimited file. I can also save the latent variable scores here. This option is available from the main menu as well. And I can save the model as a JPEG file. I can also uh, view more detailed results. Uh, I can view general results, and uh, key here are the model fit indices and, p and related p-values. They're all good for this model. I can see path coefficients and p-values. I can see standard errors and effect sizes. Uh, the effect sizes uh, are useful because sometimes uh, Path coefficients will be significant, statistically significant, but their uh, effect sizes will be too low to be relevant from a practical perspective. Uh, these effect sizes here are F squared uh, effect size coefficients, Cohen's F squared coefficients. Standard errors can be used for uh, more complex uh, tests. Here we can see combined loadings and cross loadings. Uh, ECU var is a one indicator variable, so the uh, loading is one. Uh, loadings are shown within parentheses here, and outside parentheses are the cross loadings for each uh, latent variable. Uh, combined loadings and cross loadings table. In this table here, the loadings are unrotated and the cross loadings are rotated. We also see here standard errors for each one of the indicators and p-values. These uh, are useful for tests of reflective variable measurement uh, quality. Pattern loadings and cross loadings, they are all rotated. And uh, the rotation employed by WAR PLS is an oblique rotation that is uh, similar to PROMAX. Structure loadings and cross loadings, they are all unrotated. Indicator weights, these are the weights that are um, calculated by the software for aggregating each of the indicators into its particular latent variable. Uh, PLS regression tends to uh, bring down um, uh, cross weights to zero, meaning that the error term in the equations linking indicators to latent variables is zero. That's one of the uh, purported advantages of um, PLS regression algorithm. Here we have standard errors. Uh, standard error here, uh, uh, it, it, these standard errors can be used in uh, more complex tests. Um, also, p values for the weights and variance inflection factors for the weights. Um, p values and variance inflation factors for weights can be used in formative. Uh, variable, formative latent variable measurement quality. Here we have various uh, latent variable coefficients, R squared, uh, composite reliabilities, Cronbach alphas. These uh, tend to be uh, similar uh, 
uh, although uh, the composite reliabilities, they take loadings into consideration, so they tend to be a bit higher than the Cronbach alphas. These are two measures of uh, reliability. Here we have average uh, variances extracted, uh, full collinearity VIFs. These are uh, variance inflation factors that are calculated for each of the latent variables in the model and that allow for an assessment of a full collinearity test, including all the variables in the model. Typically, if they are low, lower than 2.5 or 3.3, uh, these are uh, widely uh, used uh, thresholds, uh, even 5, they are uh, considered to be indicative of no uh, collinearity in the model. And Q squared coefficients, they are predictive validity coefficients. They tend to be similar to the R squared coefficients. When they are similar to the R squared coefficients, that's a good sign. Uh, if they are negative, then uh, we can uh, assume that predictive validity in the block, including each one of the endogenous latent variables in the model, is not acceptable. Endogenous latent variables are latent variables to which other latent variables point. I can see uh, correlations uh, among latent variables. Uh, the correlations among latent variables in this table here, they also show the square roots of the average variances extracted for each latent variable which is useful in tests of discriminant validity. Uh, we can see here the block specific variance inflation factors where collinearity is estimated for the predictors in each block. These, this is uh, also known as vertical collinearity. Correlations among indicators can also be seen here. Um, here I can see uh, the, um, the various types of relationships that were uncovered by the software, whether they are linear or warped. If, if I click on a particular relationship, I see the particular shape of the relationship in this um, graph that is uh, uh, where, where the axes are standardized. I can also save this graph. And I can also see indirect and total effects. Um, these can be uh, somewhat complex to understand, but they are very useful in analysis. So for example, uh, here I have indirect effects for paths with two segments. So let me give an example of a path with two segments, this one between ECU VAR and EFI. There are two segments here, this one and this one, they're both significant. So ECU VAR and EFI, so this is the path coefficient for this entire indirect effect, which is essentially the product of these two uh, coefficients here. Um, here I have number of uh, paths for uh, that, that have two segments between each pair of variables. The p-values associated in this case here, the p-value is significant. Standard errors and effect sizes. I also have, and I have this for all segments. For example, I have this for paths with three segments. In this case, there's only one path with three segments between ECU VAR and EFI, and the path of three segments is this one here. And I have uh, path coefficients, p-values, etc. for that as well. And finally, down here at the bottom, I have the total effects. The total effects combine all of the uh, indirect effects as well as direct effects into one number. And they're important because in a model like this, I may want to know whether ECU VAR has a significant effect on EFI um, through this model, through various mediating variables. 
And as we can see, there are mediating variables here. Uh, one of them is uh, PROC, another is EFI. And the model is relatively complex. So what the software does is to calculate the, indirect, the total effect coefficients as well as the p-values and standard errors and, and effect sizes for each one of them. So let's say let's see the total effect between ECU var and, and effectiveness that is here. That's the total effect, and uh, it's made up of uh, uh, two main paths, and uh, one of the paths is this one, the other is this one here. Then I have p-values, so it is significant. I also have standard errors and effect sizes. This concludes this demo on step five.